or still on insecurity, the federal government has linked fintech platforms, point of sales operators, and non government organizations as accessories to terrorism financing in Nigeria. The Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit discloses in its 2022 National Inherent Risk Assessment of Terrorism Financing in Nigeria. According to the report, the assessment uh, relied on data from intelligence, security, law enforcement agencies, Central Bank of Nigeria, Department of State Services, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Niger Financial Intelligence Unit, as well as various regulatory and supervisory agencies. Apart from ransoms, the report explained that terrorist groups derived funds from arms trade, donations from sympathizers, trade in dried fish, proceeds from seized farms and livestock, as well as human and drug trafficking, including sale of tramadol. Well, to give more insight into this development, Dennis Amakri, a former Deputy Director of the Department of State Services, DSS, joins me now. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, Nigeria has been battling terrorism, especially in the North East, for 13 good years. How significant uh, is this report in, in light of Nigeria's current security situation? Uh, well, you have to... Um Look at it again uh, for 10 years, more than 10 years, we've been fighting this. So if we have been fighting a particular enemy for more than 10 years, that means that he's fully being financed. He's being fully financed, and uh, of course, he, he, he has the wherewithal to stand, you know, to us, to the country, for those more than 10 years that he has been in business. And now that the federal government is aware of these infractions, uh, what line of action should we expect? Uh, well, the thing is that um, we have to do more than what we are doing right now. We cannot continue announcing and then not doing anything about it. Because when you know that there are terrorist financiers, arrest them. And then, of course, prosecute them so that they are ashamed. Everybody will know. And of course, it will serve as a deterrent uh, to others who are in that same business. But uh, when you allow it to happen, and um, it goes on and on and on, uh, just some, just two days ago now, uh, we 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 have even allowed uh, this financing to go on. In fact, indirectly, you will say that we we know those who are besides the fintechs. Uh, even Nigerians are financing the terrorism. Uh, if you remember, two, just two days ago, uh, Belo Toji, one of the um, uh, terrorist leaders in Zamfara State, uh, has levied a um, um, Gidam uh, Goga, which is a very small village there, and asked them to bring 20 million. Otherwise, he's going to attack them. And they have paid him. They have paid him. And of course, this guy is still in Nigeria. What will he do with that 20 million? He will go and buy more arms. And remember, the president has just said that more arms are moving into the Lake Chad area. That means we, we, we you know, in, indirectly or directly, we are, we are actually financing this because all those arms that are coming in are not coming in for free. They are just those uh, uh, the monies used for um, either kidnapping or ransom payments and stuff like that. Well, indeed, uh, Dennis Amakri, former Deputy Director, Department of State Services, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time and your contribution.